Good morning. My name is James Little from Mass Spectral Interpretation Services, and today I would like to share with you a webinar on the changes in the Tandem NIST 23 Search Program version 3.0. Here's the list of changes in the NIST 23 Search from the user manual for version 3. It was copied from page 23 in the manual. And it's very detailed, and we will go through most of the topics in later slides in the video, but I just put this here for you to look at if you want to. You can stop the video or also I put a handout on my web page that has this PowerPoint that I'm working from. The manual this year has been much improved with hyperlinks that are in blue in the manual. and You can find a copy of this user manual on my website in the user manual section. There's been a large increase in the tandem spectra in the version 23. There are 51,501 compounds, which is 60% more than in 2020, with a total of 2.4 million spectra. There's a lot more information below on the types of methods employed and the precursor ion types. You can find their brochure on my website at the following link. The selection process was developed a few years ago and continues, and they look at trying to find things that are important by looking in ones that are mentioned in collections, and then they purchase them and get the tandem library spectrum and put them out in the library. If you want to see the process that they use for that, there's a very good presentation on my website, which whose link is shown below. And one of the slides from the presentation shows the detail in which they go to get these tandem spectra for the, the versions that they sell in the library. And again, there's a link at the bottom of this page for the same presentation that shows in detail how this is done. You need to watch the current webinar for the version 3.0 changes, but then you still need to view additional videos on my website to complete your training. Some of the older training will show the version 2.4 windows, but it'll be pretty obvious what has changed if you look at the part zero first and then look at the other ones. But I can't stress enough, if you want to learn how to use a software you've never used it before, please take time to look at parts one through eight to learn how to use the software. And of course, these can be found on my website. Before we look at the version 3.0 software, I need to review what the windows look like in version 2.4. So if you go up to the library search options and open that window, you'll see that when you're doing identity searches here, you have the EI in addition to the MSMS type searches and the same for the hybrid or the similarity searches. You'll have all of them here. Well, if you're just doing tandem, they've, NIST has tried to make it simpler so you only see the, the items in the search menu that are related to the MSMS search and not the EI search. And so that, that will be the major changes you will see in the version 3.0 software. I've now opened the version 3 software. And the first thing you'll note is if, when you go to File, you'll see this new option called Select Spectrum Type. This allows you to pick the type of analysis you want to do, whether it be tandem or EI. Or, but you can still open all of the options if you want to. But if you use EI or Tandem, it will greatly simplify the library search options window. So let's, since we're interested in Tandem, we'll pick Tandem, say OK. Now we'll come up and look at the library search options window. You'll note first that if you look at the identity, it got rid of a lot of the searches that are related to EI. And likewise, for the similarity for the hybrid type searches, a lot of them have disappeared. You still have the MSMS menu up here the tab at the top. The other thing you'll notice is that the full spectrum options that determine the method are now a pull down menu as opposed to radio buttons. If you look at the full spectrum search, that's much like a standard search. The impurity tolerant was what it would be called before would be the reverse search and that does not penalize you if there are extra ions in your spectrum of the unknown as compared to the library spectra, so it doesn't affect the, the score. The partial spectrum search is new, and this is like the opposite of the reverse search in that if you don't have ions present in your unknown, 
and you search the library, it doesn't penalize you, it does not penalize you for those ions that are absent in the unknown that are found in the library spectrum. And NIST indicates that could be useful in such spectra, maybe from an Orbi trap, where they're very low, low noise in the spectrum, but some of the ions might be missing as compared to those you might find in the library spectrum. So they said this could be particularly useful for those type of spectra. A new thing that's been added to the software in version 3 is if you hover over an ion, like in the top spectrum here, if it's not labeled by the software, it'll tell you what the value is as you hover over it. So now let's do a search in the version 3 software. You can notice that they've supplied additional spectra than that normally come. They only used to have a few, but now there's a good many here for you to test the software. And I'm going to pick number 15 in the example spectra. I'm going to go look and make sure my settings are right. They have some initial settings here for MSMS, and they have one for EI that has the basic settings. Of course, if you modify the menus, how they're displayed, or how you search, you'll need to save your own configuration for future use. But I'll just pick the one that they had as the default one. Do I want to save the current one? I think I just won't in case I change something I didn't want to. I'll come up to the library search options and see if it looks OK. We're doing an identity search. That looks reasonable. Uh, it also does the pre-search. It does everything looks to be set up fine. Even the libraries are set up for MSMS, so that looks very good. So let's go back out and we'll go. And it searches. It's very much the same display as before. If you look at the top level of it, you see your unknown on the top, the different spectra between your unknown and the, and the best library hit, and then the library hit, and to the right, information about the library hit. So if you go over to the score, you can see it's about 992. So it's a good fit uh, for the uh, compound. So that's likely what it is. So pretty much the same as in the version 2.4 in that regard. Let's take a closer look at some of the results. I'll select the best hit in the, in the results, which is hit number one here, and then go to the bottom window. When I'm looking at the results in the bottom window, I find it very useful to get rid of some extra information that I'm not really interested in. So I, I go to Properties, and I turn off the Mass to Charge Intensity list, and also wrap the text so things that might go off the right side of the screen are now rolled over so you can see the end of the string. All right, now we go down and scroll here. The first thing of interest that has changed will be the Inchi key. If you click on the Inchi key for the compound, it's a representation of its structure, it now goes to Google instead of going to PubChem directly. Before, you would have gotten the PubChem results only. And in case this case, of course, the PubChem results will be a, a part of the Google search, so you really haven't lost anything. You just have additional information. Often, I find it useful when looking at a lot of information to click on images instead of clicking on the all to just look at what type of images come up or maybe sometimes even when I'm doing EI type data I'll, I'll bring up an EI spectrum that someone might have. So overall I think it's a big improvement to have the Google search as opposed to going to the PubChem results directly. Another thing you will note in the results in the bottom right hand corner is that they've e extended the number of databases that they cover. So you can see it has Wikipedia, Drug, and other ones here over on the right hand, but also in the bottom left side where you have the results for the search, the score, you'll have DBS, the databases. It'll tell you how many entries occur in that database. So there are 36 that occurred in these one, two, three, four, five, six databases. And this could be useful sometimes when you have two spectra that are very similar for one reason or another that you can't tell, usually consider the one with the most database references as the one you might consider first to decide if that's a possible identity for your structure. The list of databases in the search results is, is given to, by NIST in a PDF file. I've put a copy of this PDF file within the documentation. I, I put it in the area on my website which includes the manuals. So you might find it interesting. It shows the abbreviation for what the ones are used in the DBS column in the score results and also has some URL links to useful information.
So again, that's on my website, and I've actually put a link in the handout down below. The last new function that I would like to discuss is the name search within version 3, NIST search. But before I show you the one in version 3, I want to review what it looked like in version 2.4. So I've opened the 2.4 software, go to the bottom where it says names, and for all the name searches, you can only pick one library at a time. So I've picked the high resolution MSMS NIST. And I'm looking for 4 hydroxy benzoic acid. You see that when I was typing it in, it took away a lot of the spaces and dashes. It's trying to use as much of the characters that it can. And I think it only do 16 or 17 here. So that really is highly limited. And you really can't find the exact structure you want. You can get rid of the numbers if you want to by clicking the A to Z, and it'll only show the A to Z, the alphanumerics, but that really still doesn't help. It's just, just not enough characters to do a good search. So they've made a big change in that in version 3. So now I've opened the version 3 software to do the name search. I'll go to the bottom, the Names tab, clear the field, and then I'll type in my 4-hydroxybenzoic space acid propyl ester. You can still see it is stripping out the dashes and the spaces to try to conserve the, the information in the field that it can search, but in this case it's not very much limited. Before it was around 16 to 17 characters, it's around 250, 249 now. And again, you can only search one library at a time, and you can change it so it doesn't search for specific isomers or numbers within the field, but I like that for what I'm looking for. And now, if you look over to the right, I've found the exact structure I'm looking for, as opposed to having to scroll through the list and look afterwards because it'll only show me the vicinity of where it's at. And the other big thing that I like at the bottom is we now have the other spectra, so it's got all the MSMS spectra for that compound under different energies and different collision energies and sometimes different instruments. So that's very useful now. That was not present in the other one. So again, I think this is a big improvement in the name search that users will really appreciate when they're looking for something by name. In summary, I hope you found this webinar useful in understanding the changes between version 3.0 and 2.4 of the NIST search software. But of course, you'll need to view parts 1 through 8 if you're not already familiar with that, the topics included in those videos to gain a complete understanding of the software for unknown identification using tandem mass spectral data. But in general, all the major functions and concepts are the same between the two versions. This just simplified the library search options menu to make it easier for the user, creating an EI-specific one and a tandem MSMS-specific one. But there are many other nice features added, including improved name search, the Google Inchi key, etc. And if you want to see a total list, remember on page 23 of the manual, you can find the total things that have been changed and a couple of things eliminated. And the link to the course, including part 0 through part 8, is shown in the handout and the link down below. I would like to dedicate this webinar to Sandy Markey for all his critical work that he's done over the years working on the NIST libraries. He is a member of the ASMS since 1968 and has been in other key areas of the mass spec area over the years, and his lifetime career has been very important to the mass spec community. Sandy will be missed.